morning. Welcome back. You're still watching Debrek on this eighth day of May 2023. My name is Sam Gituku. To reintroduce the panelists, uh, Jeffrey Wadendeto is the member of parliament for Teto Constituency. Good morning. Good morning, Sam. Welcome back. It's been a, a couple of weeks. It's been a while, and I'm very happy to come back. Anthony Oloch, member of parliament for Madara Constituency. Have I seen you this year? I'm not sure. Not even last year. Oh, yeah. It's been <laughs> such a long time. What is it? What did you do wrong? I, I went and I need to sort out my election. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay, congratulations, therefore. Thank you. Honorable Robert Mboui is the deputy minority leader. Good morning. Morning, Sam. Great. And uh, we have uh, David Ocheng, member of parliament for Genya Constituency, also sits in the speaker's panel. Good morning. Good morning, Sam. Good to see you. And um, I want us to begin by looking at uh, what Kenyans are saying. On the front pages of the two dailies, you'd see that on the front page of the Daily Nation, Ruto reignites fuel tax storm. President William Ruto's quest for to reinstate an, up, an unpopular fuel tax that his predecessor, Uhuru Kenyatta, uh, was forced to shelve, revives the political games that stalk petroleum pricing and exposes Kenya Kwanzaa leaders dub double speak on a matter of public interest that has a direct impact on the cost of living. Living. Then you see at the top, civil servants threaten to go on strike of a housing fund. And then on the front page of the standard, it's a similar story. Civil servants defy order on new taxes. The public service employees say the proposed tax measures will eat up to 52% of their pay, which they claim is over taxation, and call on MPs to reject the finance bill. They are saying, based on their calculations, that um, it might take away 52% 50, of uh, workers' earnings, leaving only 48%, which is also to be subjected to 16% VAT for every purchase of goods and services. And so much analysis has been done. Of course, the citizens have been invited to uh, give their contributions. Uh, this is what you call public participation on the finance bill. It's uh, a, a publication, an advertisement that you see on page 9 of the Daily Nation. Uh, and of course, highlighting some of the areas that are proposed to be amended, many of them, and then you'll be touching on some of them. And Kenyans are supposed to write and submit their memoranda uh, to the clerk of uh, the National Assembly, and that is by 20th of May 2023 at 5 p.m. That will be a Saturday. Today being 8th, then you're talking about some 12 days. Honorable Mboye, I'll begin with you, uh, because you are among the first to arrive. When you look at, um, of course, so much concern has come from Kenyans on this finance bill. Um, public participation is awaited. Maybe we can commence it here. Um, what, what really strikes your attention uh, that Kenyans need to be uh, cautious or aware about? Yeah, uh, thank you, Sam. Sam, uh, first, I want to say that uh, it is very shocking that uh, just a few months after the election and considering the kind of uh, promises that were being given to citizens in the last campaigns that uh, Kenyans can be you know subjected to such a ridiculous and uh, totally expensive uh, situation of uh, of a new finance bill which in, in in the years that I've been in parliament from 2013 I have never seen uh, such such a vicious uh, attempt at uh, turning you know, turning Kenyans into paupers. Uh, you know, I, I don't know, I, I'm almost uh, inclined to imagine a situation where we have uh, the Count Dracula sucking the blood uh, from his victims. Because really, when you look at this uh, finance bill, and, and by the way, I'll, I'll, I'll advise uh, almost all Kenyans to write a memorandum to the, to the clerk so that they can know the, the magnitude with which uh, this is going to affect Kenyans. You know, I, uh, let me just start by pointing out uh, what, what it basically means to employees. Some, we are looking at a situation where our employees are already uh, suffering from an increase uh, of almost uh, over 500% in NSSF that has just been introduced this year. And uh, that means that uh, from uh, 200 shillings that was being paid, now they're paying over 1,000 shillings. I think it's 1,080. Mm -hmm. NHIF has also been increased by, you know, to, to set at a rate of 2.7%, which means anyone earning of ab about 40,000 40, per month will pay more in, uh, in, 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 uh, in NHIF. In fact, the maximum had been set to, to 1,700. But uh, people will pay well in excess of tens of thousands. Um, then there is the introduction of uh, this uh, National Housing Development Fund, which we had debated before in Parliament and had also been taken to court. 
um, where now <laughs> every employee is expected to pay 3% of their salary right. to, 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 to purchase a house. And you know, when it comes to issues of purchase of houses, it's very personal. Mm. Because uh, according to the, the, the way this is being set up, it's like everybody is going to contribute. It's like, in my opinion, a Ponzi scheme, where, you know, a million people contribute, but only about 10, 20,000 benefit. Mm -hmm. and, and really, at the end of the day, I think that's very unfair. Payers yuan has also gone up, uh, you know, from people earning half a million from 30% to 35%. And, and that, it doesn't stop there, Sam, because there is also pressure that has been put on the employee because uh, there, is a new, there is a new proposal that uh, people, when they, the person who collects tax, uh, rent for, for houses that our employees live in, uh, must remit that money within, uh, within 24 hours. That means there will be pressure on every employee to pay their rent probably by the last day of the month. And you know, with the kind of uh, situation we are facing, it's very difficult. Again, there is also the reintroduction of the 16% uh, you know, VAT on fuel. Uh, from 8%. That again means that the cost of living, the cost of transport, those who go by, 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 by public means, the cost of fare, will also go up. Uh, then, I mean, we've, we've seen even introduction of taxes on, you know, very basic things like, uh, you know, uh, beauty products for our, our ladies that, uh, you know, receptionists and secretaries going to the offices who will suddenly have to pay more to be presentable before they go to the office. Even the mobile phones. I mean, let me say some, I think this is, this is totally an acceptable i think uh, i would i would be very surprised to see any member of parliament standing on the floor to support this kind of bill this is a bill we must amend you know almost on any on every page so that we can at least be fair noting mm -hmm. the kind of uh, the stress kenyans are going through some you saw kenyans in the in the streets uh, complaining about the high cost of living and and suddenly we are being told that is not you know they're being told you ain't seen nothing yet you pass this finance bill and Kenyans will now not be able to afford almost anything. So some I think this is something we need to address as, as a parliament okay. and as a country. And we need to advise the government that there must be other ways. Even if you're going to look at an increase in, 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 in taxation, why not wait until things have stabilized and, and food prices have come down and economy has improved so that you can be able to tax your people. Okay. Now is the wrong time. All right. Um, you say that now is the wrong time. Geoffrey Wandetto, is, what have you seen that really strikes your uh, attention? Okay, thank you, Sam. And uh, maybe before I respond to your questions, allow me to take this opportunity uh, to pass my condolences to the family of uh, the late uh, Mukami Kemadi. Maybe you do not know Sam, but uh, both Dedan Kemadi and Mukami Kemadi have origins in Teto. Both were born in Teto. Um, and uh, even uh, where Dedan Kemadi was captured, that is within my constituency. Uh, it's just that they migrated later to, you know, the family migrated later to Nyandarwa, like a lot of people from, uh, from Nyeri. So we wish, uh, we, you know, we, we, I would like to condole with the family on my behalf on, the, on, on behalf of the people of Tetu. And secondly, also to wish our students, uh, today is a reporting day. You know, we've been very busy with many other things as a country that we are forgetting that our students are going back to school today. So we also wish all of them, and I especially wish my students from Tetu a very, very good uh, second term. Mm. Um, I think someone you asked me what is striking in this uh, uh, bill. Um, uh, let me maybe start by saying that um, uh, generally taxes, uh, anywhere in the world uh, are not the most popular thing. Mm -hmm. Whether you read in the Bible, uh, taxpayers are not uh, perhaps the most popular people. Taxes is not the most popular thing in the government. But um, taxes are like a bitter but very necessary uh, pill. Uh, because without taxes, there is no state. Without taxes, we do not have this country called uh, Kenya. We can sit here and debate um, you know, about the level of taxes, which is a very good thing. And uh, that is why this uh, bill is going through uh, these stages of public participation. It will come to parliament. We are not trying to say that it will necessarily, you know, everything that is here is going to go. That is why we bring out these things for, for debate. Right. I think um, what, is, what, is, what, is, what is perhaps, um, you know, uh, for me uh, 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 striking is the government uh, wanting to um, deal with the most pressing needs in this country. If I think today what is most pressing is medical bills, and the legislators here will tell you that every day, 
we are grappling with issues of medical bills from our people who are either stuck in hospitals and we are doing harambees every day. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, is, is housing, especially urban housing. It's also been a huge, huge uh, uh, problem. And, uh, you know, a lot of our people are living in squalor conditions, uh, in, in slums, in, uh, you know, in, in decent housing. And the third uh, thing has been social security, whereby a lot of our old people, you know, uh, when they retire, um, you know, and they leave their former employment, most of them, you know, for lack of a better word, retire to their deaths because after that they have little or no support. So it has become necessary for us to prescribe these fairly bitter pills, you know, ar ar around housing. Uh, which is what the housing fund uh, hopes to achieve uh, around uh, medical, which is what the new N N NHIF rates uh, seek to achieve, you know, so that we can come closer to achieving this long-held dream of uh, universal health care. And also around uh, social security, which is what the, the new uh, NSSF uh, uh, rates uh, you know, seek to achieve. Um, I think people, have, people tend to also maybe pick about what looks out of place. Like, for example, the 35% uh, income tax. Of, of course, I know that is, that is a highlight. But people are forgetting that is for anyone earning above uh, you know, 6 million shillings. And I think other than maybe a few guys seated here, the majority of Kenyans are not affected uh, you know, by that. I'm not trying to say it is low. It is actually high. But some, again, we are not the ones with the highest rates of, of taxes in the world. I, I don't know whether you can check. I think Ivory Coast has the highest in the, in the world at 60 percent. It may not be a good case study. But even some developed countries like Finland, 56 percent. People like Israel, Slovenia, 50 percent. So what we are seeing here is, is, is not unusual. But um, what is more important in taxes, uh, Sam, is not the rates. It is what we do with the taxes. Maybe the debate in this, um, you know, on this floor should be how do we as a country become an efficient user of tax resources to be able to uh, provide um, services to our people. Some of those countries that I've mentioned, okay. things like housing is free. Public transport is free. So how do we then progressively move to that? that even if you are taxed, whatever amount you are taxed, at least the government brings a lot of that back to you in okay. terms of services. Okay, uh, I want us to listen to a voice by um, some union leaders that spoke yesterday about the burden that they are feeling. Watch. The overtaxation by the Kenya Kwanzaa government has now reached a boiling point. They started with NSSF and public sector unions did not unite. They are proposing to increase National Hospital Insurance Fund by 2.75%, while the services we get is not commensurate to what we are paying. And that has been one of the key concerns from Shumo Cheng. Um, as you tell me what your highlight is, and he has mentioned a bit of it, because yes, you can tax, but what are people getting out of it? Because especially those Kenyans that you, that are, you would say that are high income earners, they also have to finance their own programs. If you have to educate your child, if you have to take yourself to work, I mean, these are services that you're financing. If you have to go to the hospital, you're going through a private medical insurance scheme, not an HIF. So how do you, it's not even balancing, but how do you take care of that? Thank you so much, uh, Sam. Sam, you know, the, the very basis of government, the very basis of democracy, mm -hmm. is either the idea that will come together and form a country or a nation mm -hmm. and have shared responsibilities, shared duties, and shared benefits. And as regards taxes, nothing more than the adage, no taxation without representation comes to play this morning. And that's why I'm sure you've called these forms of parliament, because no one's going to be taxed without the representatives having a say on this matter. And, and, and so it has to be clear this morning right. that these are proposals. And these proposals are not law yet. We will discuss them in the assembly. Mm -hmm. And what makes sense, in my opinion, will get through. What doesn't make sense will not make or will not see the light of day. And I say I, that for this reason. I'll show you about that. No, I'm certain about it because a very well guided member of parliament should know what the constituents want. <laughs> they know what, I mean, all of us here represent a, a constituency. Right. And we should know and listen to what the public wants. But, but, but above all, what is important and what, what this, in my opinion, 
does that. This is the first ever finance bill of the Kenya Kwanza government. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that they have put in everything else and the wishes they have, that this is how we want to raise re revenue for the future. That we've given you a budget uh, policy statement that has these kind of proposals, and this is how we intend to raise revenue to finance this budget that we're going to have. That's what they're telling you. And so they're telling Parliament, this is our proposal. Mm -hmm. What do you think? And, and so in, in terms of the, the, the highlights, um, let, let me start with the, you know, eleven in the house, the issue of pay as you earn. A very important issue in my opinion. And, and the principle here is that the government is saying, we want those who earn low to pay a lower rate. And we want those who earn high to pay a higher rate. Talking about equity, trying to say that those who earn high, uh, more should at least contribute more towards the volume of the country and those who earn low or earn uh, less. And they already pay more because they have a maximum of 30%. No, no, now 30% is almost for everybody else as it were. And, 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 and the bands that are put there, uh, in my opinion. That, that's what I'm low. saying. 30% of 100 is 30. 30% of 20 is 6,000. No, 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 and, and that's the point, that, that there are those who, anybody who's earning more than 100 and below, you've seen their tax going down. If you look at that band, I don't know if you have it here. No, I, I know what you're talking yeah, yeah, yeah. about. So, 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 so the idea is this, Sam, mm -hmm. that can we have, for example, equity in terms of how we tax income? And so those who earn more, are they willing to pay more to get the country going forward? The debate you should be having, in my opinion, should be, should the band be at 500,000 per month or a million per month? How do you describe a higher earner? in the country. That, that's for me would be the debate. But, but, but where I sit, I believe that there should be a proration, that those who earn less should be asked to pay less equitably. And those who earn higher sh sh should be willing to contribute more. I, I mean, this, this happens, in case where Honorable <coughs> Andrew was saying, mm -hmm. this happens in most countries, that there's a band where those who earn, say, up to, uh, say, $15,000 a month, <coughs> are going to pay more. And those who earn less, far less, we have less getting out of their pay slips. I believe the principle is all right. What is not, uh, what I don't agree with is whether the band they're putting, because of a million now with the inflation in the country, is it's quite a lot of, is, it's not a lot of money. And so maybe you want to raise the band, the, the, the band further. But in terms of equitability and responsibility sharing, I believe this is, this is a very good principle. And the same principle for me applies on NHF. Okay. That, 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 that if, 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 for example, someone is earning the minimum wage and someone is earning a million Kenya shillings. Surely, in my opinion, we should agree as a country, after a conversation, that those of us who are earning higher should be able to contribute higher to enable those who are earning less be able to get services that everyone else gets. I believe the principle is all right. What may, be, may not be all right would be the bands and how they are putting the percentages on how much everyone needs to, to okay. pay. I so so, so I, I really believe that that has to be looked at. But, but above all, this finance bill, in my opinion, does a couple of things that for me are very important. One is if government wants to raise more money, they must build the capacity of KRA. Mm -hmm. And so in this finance bill, they're talking about training and capacity building of KRA staff. For me, that's very important because we, we, we've seen how KRA has behaved over time. And we believe that lack of professionalism in that regard is not doing a good, good job. But if you look at this finance bill, there's right. a particular provision that ensures that we build the capacity of KRA to be able to do some of these things. I mean, let us not throw the baby with the bathwater, Sam. And, uh, and let's not I, I, highlight, I hear you. Let's not only highlight the things that, 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 that we, we, we think are you, you know, negative, because these are things that can be discussed. They are things that can be saved. But like, for example, the idea that we're going to reintroduce mm -hmm. The, 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 the higher VAT on petroleum products, for me, I, I'm, I'm against it. And I won't support it on the floor of the house. Because if you're talking about reducing the cost of living, then we must be hitting where it's important. Like, for example, this particular bill, much as it, 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 it seeks to introduce the tax on petroleum products, which I will oppose, it also seeks to reduce the tax on LPG. Right. Yeah, so, so there are gains and there are losses that, that, that are going to be made. And I mean, I've, I've read that finance bill twice. And I know that there are very, very, very many gains that are being made and also their losses. Okay. So in terms of the losses, we can discuss them as a member of parliament without being sensationalist on, on some of the issues that, 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 that That's fine. Honorable Cheng, we're just, we're just highlighting some of the key issues that are there. We'll get uh, deeper into it. Uh, but uh, Honorable Ocheng, for yourself, what really strikes you and what should we be doing at this point in time? Okay. First of all, um, 
uh, one of the things that strikes me is the removal of zero rating on some of the items. I think we, we need to look at this with a tooth comb. You look at some of the items removed there. Mm. Uh, you know, zero rating is an affirmative sort of tax measure to try and cushion uh, uh, people from, you know, paying extra on certain basic things. And you, you, you see the effect of removal of some of these things on cassava, on maize flour, supply of some of the things that are listed here. The net effect of this is that the, ta the, the taxpayer and the common monainchi mm -hmm. is going to end up paying more in terms of the cost of some of the basic commodities, wheat flour, is included here, cassava is included here, maize is included here. So this strikes me. Another thing that strikes me here is um, things like uh, paying more tax on digital content. This is important to me because people in the lower income bracket, people who come from places where I represent, do a lot of their work on digital platform and make money on things like mobile phone. Mm -hmm. Phones will now be taxed more. Uh, people uh, generate employment and use the, the phone as, as their basic offices right. or the point of transaction. Mm -hmm. So a lot of young people are going to be affected by uh, this tax regime that has been included here. And of course I do agree and see uh, a red flag in the question of fuel. The effect of uh, taxation or increasing taxation on petroleum products will have the effect of uh, increasing the cost of production, cost of production of things like maize, cover production of other basic uh, commodities. And I do agree with the employers when they talk about um, uh, the increased taxation on NSSF, NHIF, and the other taxation measures that have come even before this. Employers are supposed to pay some industrial training levy which I have seen even before this finance bill. Now, you're asking an employer, and I am an employer myself as a member of parliament, without increasing the amount of money available to that employer, right. you're required to match certain payments. You look at the housing yeah. uh, taxation. Uh, the employer pays 3%. And the employee, uh, I mean, the employee pays 3%. The employer is supposed to match that with another 3%. Right. Now, let's look at um, why we actually end up paying this taxation. Mm -hmm. I think some of those places are some of the places we need to relook and re engineer. We have a lot of foreign debt burden. A lot of the money that we collect on uh, our taxation end up going into paying foreign debt. We need to look why are we. Uh, in that situation in the first place and what can be done so that one, let's freeze borrowing. That's right. one of the things that we need to do. Let's look at waste in government. That is something that the current budget and the current financing ought to tell us before you tax people. So when you talk about no taxation without representation, I think we are as, uh, uh, viewing that from uh, with its heads down. Let's look at why are we paying more in the first place. What have we done with our taxes before? Why have you put in so much wasted in government? Why is there 30% uh, budgeted corruption? Right. Taxation without representation means account for my taxes and why you have uh, used our taxes in this manner before. That's my idea of what you talk about taxation without representation. If you're going to tax me more, tell me why. If you're going to tax me more, tell me how you have used my taxes before. So I think we need to look at the entire philosophy around our taxation so that we don't end up being taxed for the sake of taxing. And I don't agree that it is okay to tax because there are other countries that have taxed more. There are also other countries which have taxed less. We should aim at being at the bottom end of the taxation in the list of countries that tax less. Why should we aim at being at the top three, top four? top five of the countries are taxed. What do people who tax less do? Why can't we re-engineer the philosophy around our taxing so that we are at the bottom end of the taxation pyramid? Okay. I think these are the issues that stand out for me in this finance bill. All right, and so you've not even started. We're just laying the foundation for <laughs> this. So we're taking a short break. When we come back, we continue with more, and of course, getting into the nitty gritties of um, uh, some of those um, proposals. Again, it is not yet law, but could be law. But we talk about it before that, after the break.